In this video, we're going to be going over how to gain and maintain persistence. So we're just going to head over to the Ubuntu server and we're just going to log in. We need to change a few things in the Ubuntu server. So we need to change a few permissions that hold our website. So if we head over to the directory where it's held, if we do cd var www.html and if we just go there for the moment, so we have those two directories and those two files. So the website we used for the file inclusion was in the slash five directory. So if we do it ls dash l, this will show us the permissions that what each of those directories and files has. So if you look at the slash five directory, it can be read by everybody, but only the user can change that directory. So what we want to do is we want to change this directory so everyone can read, write, and execute. So if we do sudo chmod777 and then the directory, so if we do five slash, it will prompt us for our the password. And now if we do ls-l, we can see that it has all permissions granted to, to it. So now we've got it configured the way we want it. If we head over to our Kali machine, we're going to use a tool called MPC, which is Metasploit Payload Creator. And what we could do here is we could just do a dot dash MPC dot SH, and then we can do a PHP reverse TCP, and we're just going to press enter. And then it will ask us what interface we want to use. So for this, we're just going to use uh, the ETH0, which is our IP address. So we're just going to press 1. So if we create a quick HTTP server like we did before, we can then do the similar sort of process with the file inclusion. So before we do anything else, what we want to do is just open up Metasploit. So if we change directory into the MPC folder, if we do MSF console dash R, and then if we do php dash php dot rc and press enter, what this will do is it will import the settings of the dot rc file into Metasploit and it will create the handler for us. So what we want to quickly do is we want to change the code of the php interpreter shell. So what we want to do is we just want to change the code of the PHP file. So if we do nano PHP and then dot PHP, we'll see that it's uh, commented out. So if we just get rid of the comments and then save that, then what we can do is just start a simple Python server. So if we do Python dash m simple http server and then give it a port of 1899 and then we just want to copy this file and then if we go to the web browser and do http then the ip address with the port and then if we paste the file as well and if we press enter We'll see it's trying to connect. We can see that we've got a hit on the web server. And if we head over to Metasploit, we'll be able to see that we've got a session. So what we can do from here is type sessions. And this will show us what sessions we have open. So we can do sessions dash I and then one. And then we'll get an interpreter shell. So what we can do now is just type shell. Then if we do ls, we can see we're in that directory. So we're going to make a directory. We do mkdir, and then we're going to call it dot test. And then if we do ls, we should see a directory, but it's not there. So what about if we do ls dash a? 
we can see it's there. So this essentially hides the directory if you're just doing a simple ls command. So what can we do with this? So if we go into the dot test directory, and then what we can do in here is we can wget the we can wget this. And then we should be able to see it there. So then we can run can run this shell. So we do PHP and then PHP dot interpreter. Unfortunately you have to write this all out because it's a interpreter a, yeah, it's a interpreter shell, so it doesn't you can't do tab completion. So if you do staged reverse TCP four four three dot PHP. So the unfortunate thing we've not been able to use tab completion is we'll make mistakes. So if you do spell it right, so we can then see that we have another interpreter session. What we can also do is if we navigate to the location of that file within the web browser, that will also give us another session. So if we go to dot test, and then if we paste in the file name again, we don't need to do the PHP command. We can just press enter with that. And then as you can see, it opens up another session. So the fact that we've been able to hide the folder from a typical user it hides the fact that there's anything there that's just one method of being able to get persistence another way you could do it is by using your ssh keys you can essentially get the ssh keys from the kali machine and then you can just copy them into the ubuntu server so unfortunately you can't do that with the apache user however what we have done is a viable way of, of gaining persistence